What is going on everybody? It is Dylan here with Astro DFS bringing you a brand new video. Today's video, I'm going over some sleeper rookies to take in your draft. Now these rookies aren't going to be guys like your Brees Hall, like your Alave, uh, any of those guys in the top because you already know who they are. Uh, they have a really good chance of producing fantasy points off the rip uh, and being some of those guys that are drafted um, within the top 10 rounds. These are guys that are typically going past the 10th round um, and sometimes even undrafted depending on your drafts. So I'm going to talk about it and try to help you guys out. Uh, so quarterback, there's not like Kenny Pickett's the only person and I'm not drafting Kenny Pickett. I don't recommend drafting Kenny Pickett. Just let him stay on the waivers until something happens. I don't think there's any quarterback worth taking. Running backs, uh, it comes down to uh, quite a few names uh, for me, honestly. Isaiah Spiller is obviously number one for me, uh, he's a guy that you could definitely uh, keep on your bench the entire year. Uh, you don't have to. It's a strategy that I wouldn't mind doing. Uh, you have 15 roster spots. He's worth keeping on. Uh, he's the running back, too, for the Chargers this year. He will see some volume. Uh, it won't be much. It'll be small. Um, but he's a good handicap player for Austin Eckler, a guy that goes mid first round um and very talented fits basically that uh Eckler role uh receiving back in um a, a, a guy that's going to be your three down back so definitely got to have on your roster um Damian Pierce number two very good coming out of college um the only issue is he's going to Houston a very shaky offensive line a very shaky offense in general uh but being that RB1 you're still getting uh, the RB1 of a team. Uh, he's not necessarily starting right now. It's basically between him and Marlon Mack for those first team reps, but he's definitely making a name for himself in camp right now. Uh, I would tune in and definitely see where that ends up, uh, but it looks like he's a very good shot to be RB1 in Houston this year. I know it doesn't sound the greatest, um, but having an RB1 on your roster is definitely an advantage. Uh, Rashard White is another guy going at 139. These are guys, like I said, going 10th round or later. So it doesn't really hurt your roster as much. Uh, Ricard White uh, is going to be the RB2 for Tampa Bay. Um, if Leonard Fournette for any reason has uh, a down in play, uh, gets injured, anything like that, he's a very good handicap running back, uh, good receiving back. So Richard White is definitely somebody else to keep on your roster. Algier, I'm, I'm still trying to get as high on Algier. He's going at 140, so one behind. Uh, Richard White, but he's a, definitely another guy um, who has the ability to start in Atlanta, um, going against Williams and Patterson, maybe, um, depending on where they put Cordell, uh, but figures to get a definitely somewhat of a volume into the beginning of the season and hopefully overtake. Not the most talented of these running backs, but definitely having an RB1 on any team is an advantage and disadvantage. So we'll go to receivers next, and receivers is what it, is where you find a lot of uh, opportunity here. Um, George Pickens going at 148, so he's going 12th round, basically. Um, figures to be the wide receiver three in this offense, and I know you have Claypool, you have Deontay Johnson, you have Fairmouth, you have Harris, you have a lot of mouths to feed. They upgrade an offensive line. They get a mobile quarterback, which I think might make their offense a little more opportunist um granted is Trubisky and a lot of people have a sour taste in their mouths from what Trubisky did in Chicago um but the bits and pieces we saw in Buffalo uh, maybe we see some some promise out of Trubisky or Pickett for that matter depending on what they do um but George Pickens going here very talented receiver out of Georgia um they draft him in the second round I think he's definitely got potential to um, be wide receiver three, basically going on, on your flex. I wouldn't count on him cracking your wide receiver one or two, uh, but definitely being a flex spot on your roster. Uh, Jalen Tolbert is probably my favorite underrated rookie wide receiver. Uh, if you look, he's going as like the 10th wide rookie wide receiver. Uh, he's going at 170. So you're probably not drafting him um, or someone's taking a shot on him back here. And Jalen Tolbert, coming out of Southern Alabama, is just very talented. He opens the field. Uh, very good route runner. Very good hands. Uh, definitely somebody that's going to help Schultz and Lamb 
Um, and then Gallup, whenever Gallup comes back. I see Jalen Tolbert easily being a starter on this Dallas offense, and we know what Dallas does with their offense. They're, they're a team that can throw the ball a lot, and having Dak there uh, throwing the ball very well. Someone like Jalen Tolbert, I think, is definitely uh, a guy that cracks the top five wide receivers going as a wide receiver 10 for rookies. Um, another guy that hits your flex spot uh, during this season. Uh, and then... Alec Pierce is another guy that I I do like. I think not only because he's going to have a better quarterback than what Indianapolis has had the past few seasons as far as passing, um, but being a rookie drafted where he was and having the opportunity to be a wide receiver two or three on this roster with Matt Ryan, uh, I definitely think helps a lot. That offensive line is still very good. They are a run-first team by all means, but getting Matt Ryan shows that they do want to open up that passing ability a little more. Um, going at 193, he's typically not getting drafted in your drafts if he is someone's picking him in the last round. And it's the same thing with Wondell Robinson. Uh, it's going to be very hard for him um, to see where he pans out in the Giants offense. They do have a better offensive coordinator, in my opinion. Now it's all up to Daniel Jones of what he does. Uh, but with Sterling Shepard, uh, Kenny Galladay, um, Kadarius Tony, Wandell could easily get in there. We saw a lot of injuries on this roster last year. Um, we've seen, I mean, they went down to like the 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th receiver. Um, a lot of injuries last year. I doubt that happens again this year. Um, but a guy that's very talented that has a lot of um, untapped potential. Uh, of course, being a rookie, but I, I think he's very talented. And is him and Kadarius Tony could be a very, very good duo for that Giants offense. Tight ends. Um, there's not a rookie tight end I recommend drafting. Uh, there will be some names that we definitely. Check out Bellinger uh, for the Giants, uh, Deluch for Denver, uh, Jelani Woods for the Colts, I think, is definitely somebody that could make rosters uh, towards the end of the year, depending on what happens with Mo Ali Cox. Um, and then the last name for me, uh, maybe I passed him. Or just this far down. Uh, Isaiah Likely, I'll just say it, Isaiah Likely for uh, Baltimore. Um, I think very talented, fits that offense very good. Um, yet again, it's not going to be a name that you draft at all, um, but is more somebody that is, I don't even know where he's at. There he is. Isaiah Likely. Um, definitely somebody you should not draft, uh, but a guy that might be on your roster towards the middle of the year. Um, depending on what happens with Andrews, I know they want to run two tight end sets very fast. So, uh, another guy that may, might make your roster, but it's just a name to watch out for. Um, so essentially you're looking out for your Isaiah Spiller. You're looking out for your Pierce, your Shard White, your Algier wide receivers. You're looking for your George Pickens, your Jalen Tolbert, your Alec Pierce, your Wondell Robinson, um, and then nothing for tight ends either. So hope you guys did enjoy. Hope this did help. And I will see you in the next video.